Check, check, check. This is Brian talking. I'm coming in at negative nine, negative six. What about you, Justin? Hey, what's up, fam? This is your influencer pal, Justin Robert Young, saying smash that like button and and hump that subscribe. Hump hump that subscribe. Fuck that bell, baby. Fuck you know what? It. That, your... uh, that may have sounded like a test before we start, but that was the beginning of the show. Ring the bell with your dick. Put ding. your dick in the middle of the bell and go ding a ling a ling a ling a ling. Is that what they call it? A ding a ling? They, they don't call it a bell end for nothing. <laughs> bell end and ding a ling. Wait, so a yeah, bell end is a British thing, right? Yeah, it's because the end of a dick looks like a bell. Uncircumcised dick. I don't know. I think a, yeah, an uncircumcised dick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. A circumcised one. The head, the dick head. Yeah. Is the bell. Well, I don't know. I always thought. I always thought an it's uncircumcised. It's like the ridge. The ridge of the bell. Well, but I don't know. I always thought. I always thought the anteater looked more like a bell than than this. No, no. The helmet looks more like a bell. Yeah. 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 Where are you at on circumcision? I, I'm not for it. I'm I'm uncircumcised. I'm uncut. Wow. T-I-L. Today is the day I learned yeah. that you're not cut. No. Uh, I think I'm, it should have been obvious by my demeanor. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so I uh, that that was a, a bullet I dodged because uh, I, I had three girls. people be driving like this. <laughs> well, no, I mean, like, 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 uh, 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 by the way, everything is frozen. The roads are dangerous. And oh, so yeah. Nobody's we're, here. We're doing audio. <laughs> Nobody's here. I uh, went against my wife's uh, uh, wishes. <laughs> she told you not to. <laughs> she, well, she didn't. She did the thing where she knows that if she directly tells me not to, then I'm going to definitely do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah. So she she did the 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 soft influence of well you know uh but i mean this 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 was the move so we could save everybody from driving out right and and also uh because also when we do the show at night that's when it's going to be cold like like this is right now texas roads are wet but not frozen Uh, unlike my deck which is definitely wet and frozen you have a deck that if it were inhabited with the spirit of a murderer, <laughs> would act identical to how it I how it acts one week a year yes. every year. It tries it actively, and that little that hilarious little bridge that bridge is like uh, yes, like, like that little bridge is a death bridge. Yeah. <laughs> so Brian, are right, here here the puppy. There is a a wooden deck that. I have never experienced a deck that just turns into ice. It just wants you to die. It it, it creates a viable NHL skating rink <laughs> on it almost immediately. Because <laughs> well, it I, only froze last night, and, and it's already, like, I looked at it, and I was like, not today, Satan, and I just went into the side door. Yep, yep. Well, Here's what I suspect. I suspect it's two things. We we don't have gutters uh to so so all of the water goes straight off whatever comes off of the roof lands on the deck. The deck is elevated a good like foot or so off the ground. So even if it's not technically freezing or the ground isn't going to freeze, uh this deck, the is, deck certain, is just freezing. can't wait to freeze, yeah. right? Uh and and then maybe maybe I made a mistake by covering it with salt because nope. That couldn't be a mistake. No, uh, I think I think covering it with salt is the way to go. It, it will be futile uh, <laughs> because it will just melt the water that will immediately freeze again. Right. Except now it will have uh, uh, salt particles in but, it. But, but it is one of those things that I, I really dig doing in front of Bonnie. Like, look at me. I'm like a dad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, t- uh, happy birthday, Bonnie! Today's Bonnie's, Bonnie's birthday, birthday. Is today. Yeah, I I called Bonnie. Uh, I actually it, it got cold enough last night that I was like, you know what? I should probably just stay at HQ. Uh, this is when your paranoia yes. is at its highest. It well, be in for, for those, good reason. For 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 those who haven't heard it before, uh, significant investment. A lot of money went into this place. Very terrified that a, a pipe will burst or something, you know. So, so I, in general, when it gets scary, I like to keep an eye on my investment here. So I told, I, especially I told, considering all the equipment and everything, like, like the, there is there is the ability to continue to create the things that make the money that uh, uh, keep everything 
uh, possible. Like, you know, right. there, there's, there's a lot of very, very good reasons. My question for you as an Austin native is, is your paranoia worse materially because of the freeze apocalypse of two years ago? Oh. Like, did you have the same level of paranoia before or was the one time where everything got really, really bad and you were, you were stuck here and, and everybody was, was, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's a matter of just, uh, overall exposure because when we were doing everything out of the house, all the eggs were in one basket, uh, uh, much to Bonnie's chagrin, we would run scam stuff out of the garage, you yeah. know, and, and uh, we would do great night, night attack in SFW from the spare bedroom or whatever, right? So it's like uh, if things got cold, everybody's in the same place, yeah. same time, everything's fine, if there, right? If there's wor worst case scenario, a pipe burst, you're, you're there. Right. And uh, this place, in addition to buying the place, we bought it in extreme disrepair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that we've ever talked about the numbers, but but roughly it, it took about four hundred thousand dollars to get this place safe. Yes. <laughs> and there there are still improvements I would like to make, but but it is the most significant investment I've made in anything at, at all. And it's in physical infrastructure and it's a wonderful playground and there there's all but the things that we love happened, about HQ. I guess it wasn't fully rebuilt. You probably had one winter where it was built up, but the the big snow apocalypse had not happened yet because that's the one the one thing that I don't know because I signed the letter of intent on my home in Austin the week before the snow apocalypse happened. What I don't know is the attitude of Austinites about this. What seems to be a fairly regular time that I even remember from being friends with you that it's usually around February that it gets very cold. It possibly snows. It lasts for a couple days, maybe a week. Uh, and then it stays rainy for South by Southwest. And right. then it gets really hot. Those right. are, those are the, the seasons here. They're pretty set your watch by it. Kind all, of all of that is correct. And if what you're getting towards, uh, I'll go ahead and say, yes. If you're asking, does Austin writ large have PTSD over the snow apocalypse? Yes. Yes. 100%, so, so it was not yes. like that before that. Oh, that's, no, 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 what, no. that's what I'm asking. No, is like, it, it was in always, the before time. So, so th there are two things. Uh, one, it was always cute in general when it froze, but the last time we had like a serious uh, freezing rain situation was, was 2000 in 2000. I have these delightful photos. And even then it was cute. It was like, yeah. it rained, uh, all of the trees got covered in frozen rain. And then like the next day it was sunny and golden hour and all of the trees began to Weep. melt. And, and, and it was, it was gorgeous. It was, it was raining sunshine all day. One of the most magical days ever. And yeah. that was the record of, Ooh, when Austin gets cold, it be like this. And then the year that we had the snow apocalypse, there was a twofer. There was a cute snow, big, puffy, beautiful yeah. amazing uh, uh, uh snowflakes all over the place you know three five six inches uh, uh, uh snowballs and, and and snowmen being made it was gorgeous and then like the evil twin of that showed the up hard freeze for for 10 days straight yeah and then and then that was when uh all i could think about and and that was just when we had finished the very very expensive you know, repairs to everything, everything was fixed here and there was nobody at the property. And that's when I came here to cosplay the shining, yes. uh, which I did pretty well up until tree limbs just started to fall from the sky. And then I really snapped. It, it was unpleasant. I, I was rude to Sulu or whoever runs his social media account on Twitter. Oh, gee. Uh, uh, oh <laughs> cause he was doing the, like, because he like, was doing like too bad. Fuck Texas. You, Texas. Yes. Yeah. Too bad. Texas doesn't, uh, isn't powered by gaslighting, and I, I think I responded, "Ha ha! It's funny because we're in pain." <laughs> but uh, and then everybody decided the best way we to help Texas. Should have brought that up with Shatner. Uh, they got beef. Almost, <laughs> <laughs> almost did. Almost it's like, did. hey, hey, uh, just just between me and you, fuck to Kai, right? <laughs> <laughs> what a bitch. <laughs> There's, there was a number of, uh, there was a wonderful surreal moment during the Shatner thing where. 
it was something that I, that I hoped would happen, but didn't really expect to. But there was a moment when the audience just vanished from my mind. And it was just me and William Shatner sitting on two chairs talking to each other. Yeah. It was, it was really just awkwardly cheated out for no reason. Uh, 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 oh yeah, yes. I'm, uh, all uh, cheated out towards the audience yeah, exactly. with her. Yeah. Uh, no, that that was that was really great, and I'm really glad that both you and Andrew Heaton were there for that. That was amazing. Uh, all right, so so it is it is real because right now, and again, we have only been here after the freeze. Correct. We weren't well, even well, here for the freeze. And, and, and you you uh, uh, I thought I was being just cute uh, on on Twitter, but but. It seems like uh, I accidentally annoyed year? you. Yeah, when when I was like, uh, it's getting cold. Uh, Heaton says finally puts on a blazer. Justin says hooray. Uh, uh, gets a heating unit for his smoking deck. Brian, <laughs> full prepper mode was was what yes. I was trying to convey. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, you, well, but then again, you went through it, right? And I, and I did not, and I, 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 I didn't, what, the only thing that I had a, an issue with that was I didn't want to be the poster boy of not giving a fuck with this, just because, like, we're new to the neighborhood, like, we don't want to be the, like, hey, come on, pussies, yeah, like, no, like, I, 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 apo I apologize for implicating, yeah, I, or I didn't, I didn't want to be that. red like that, I apologize. No, that being said, it's like, now... I would say, and I, I, I would say that there is a healthy amount of overcaution, and what I don't know how to model is what it was before, because now, I think you probably had some stuff every year before where it was like, hey, roads are gonna ice, be careful, Texans don't know how to drive. They don't know how to steer into the skid, like, right. like you know, that's so it's it's probably gonna be a bad time if you're up on the the flyover bridges and, and stuff like that. I'm guessing that that was a general air, but not like a everything shutting down. We are uh uh we are we are going into everybody stay in your home and prepare yeah. for this just in case it's something as bad as it was. Well, and strategically speaking, uh th there are two plays you could make. You could have massive in infrastructure and snow plows and ice uh, or uh, salt ready to go at all times for this very uncommon occurrence. Yes. Or, and by the way, Texas, very large. I don't know if you know, but Texas is very large. It's a big old, it's a, it's or a big, you could just it's, decide it's that economically speaking, uh, yeah, one, two, three days off per year. We're, we're just going to stop things for a little bit uh, is, is, is a, a cheaper alternative. Now, in the case of the ice apocalypse, it was it was uh, once ten it days got to, straight. Yeah, yeah. Once it got to ten days, who oh boy? That, that was, was and, that was and, the scene. And by the way, it was bad. It was like this for like four days before it got it really got bad. Ten days bad. Yeah, because your deck, the murderer deck, <laughs> was frozen over while I was still looking yes. for houses like that. That was. I mean, I. In fact, the only yeah, reason that, uh, why I think you didn't wind up losing power for a significant amount of time here is, is because we lost it early. Yes. And, and then they came out and replaced get, the transformer. Yeah. You were able to get a new transformer in. Yeah. You were what, there for that. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, that would have been, I, I, for some reason, I thought that was closer to March, but I guess it was uh, earlier when you were coming out to look. It was, yeah, it was the Super Bowl. Whatever the Super Bowl uh, I watched the Super Bowl here on Sunday. I flew back Monday, uh, but you know I was only here for the weekend. As I was supposed to be here semi permanently uh, to look for a house, we found a house very quickly, thankfully. But it went from you know like got there Thursday. By the way, are, and you, then we were are, out on are you still digging the house as much? Hate it. It's so hate great. it. It sucks. Just what? kidding. No, no it's amazing. <laughs> it's great. No, I get to. I have my own room. I'm I'm doing all my my podcast stuff. In fact. I, I actually am wondering whether or not I want to relocate a lot of my recording equipment to what I have as my Twitch studio now and make all of my podcasts video podcasts as well. Because it's it's something that like, you know, nobody who's a gigantic podcast doesn't do it. Well, I, I would need infrastructure to do it, but if I had infrastructure... Uh, I mean, and by that, I mean, 
just somebody to edit and cut out clips and stuff like that. But it's like right now I got a recording booth, which is great. But also it's like, I don't know. Do I do not, I make not that? really great for uh, uh, now that you host a roundtable politics discussion? Because that's the thing. For we're not wrong <laughs> specifically. It's like maybe for for PX three, I keep it the way that I have. You could probably take that entire room and for I don't know five hundred bucks, uh, just cover everything in egg crate, right? I could, that, but also I think part of what's fun about it is that it look I, I can also spend that money to decorate it looking more awesome. And so now we're all having a conversation in this 1960, uh, uh, you know, election office, which is awesome. Okay. One, one of the coolest things that, uh, 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 uh Tom Green had a show on MTV yes. and it was long after smoking was uncool. Yes. But, on his talk show, he always just had an ashtray with a cigarette smoldering in it. Yes. I thought that was cool as shit, and you that should do that. was awesome. Yeah. No, man, that, that talk about some shit that has been folded into history, but, like, kids do not understand how cool smoking the cultural, is. cultural, yeah, well, number one, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I think people do understand how cool smoking is. Uh, people don't understand what the cultural phenomenon that was Tom Green. Tom yeah. Green, for, a, for like a, a blink in time, was among the most famous people in America and then kind of faded pretty quickly. Well, and nowadays, uh, the... The the cheap joke the the one note response is uh, uh, I, I'm debasing myself. Do you love me yet? Is all of Tom Green's career? But there was a time before that. What what, what would the one note Tom Green before that have sounded like? I mean, like he genuinely just didn't care. He was he was kind of this hero of anti comedy at at a time where that was very 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 fresh. Like it, it was when like. Alternative comedy was big. Ironic comedy was big. Uh, you know, you had like Viva Variety and stuff like that, where it's like there was this this push to do like, oh, let's do an old fashioned show. Like uh, you had the rise of like Janine Garofalo and Ben Stiller and uh, uh, Mr. Show with with Bob and Dave. Which listening, re listening to Harmontown, a thing that I found uh, fascinating. Apparently, did you know? And maybe you've heard this on Harmontown, but that. The the intro and Bob wearing a suit was a note from their agent. What? what uh, and, and they and both Bob and David thought it was such a boomer, stupid fucking note, and they hated it. And then they, you know, the agent was really leaning on him to do it, or the production company was really leaning on him to do it. And so they did it. And it's such an iconic part yeah, of that show. That that that's so remarkable that they would even think that's dumb or 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 talk like it's dumb because yeah. it's so like i mean yeah turn up the contrast you know have a, at least give a wink to somebody being the straight one and one being the wild card uh but uh, also their idea was like so bob and dave were like no we'll be monty python monty python didn't have an intro like just start with this start with the funniest sketch and then and with the the second funniest sketch and there you go that's the show and they were like, no, you need to have an intro. You need to come out and introduce yourself to the audience. And I mean, like, that, that, they're like, that's what something the fuck that lives. Is this, the 60s? That's something that lives in, in Great Night to this very day is just we, we, we arrange this whole moment where we come out and say hello to each other exactly, and, yeah. and hello to the audience and everything. Uh, but yeah, I think with Tom Green, they're. You know, Seinfeld was big. There was, like, the idea of Seinfeld being, like, the show about nothing. All these, like, big indie movies at the time were these very realistic movies about realistic things. Uh, Waking partly, life. Partly or... because of, yeah, partly because it was budgetary, partly because that's just the stories that people wanted to see. It, it was, like, Clerks, right? Or, right. like, Pulp Fiction. It's like, like yeah, this is gunplay, but this is some shit that happens next door right. to you. Like, what about the boring part of being a gangster? Exactly, right? And so Tom Green was just kind of that where it's like, all right, we're going to give this guy that no one's ever heard of, uh, but is compelling. Half of his show is doing weird shit to gross out the audience. The other part is him bullying his friend who is 
hilariously unqualified to be on television, and that's the show. <laughs> and it so, and it and it crushed. It was huge. It was massive. Well, and- he married Drew Barrymore, who was like at the time at the peak of her dangerous, exciting. Oh, I, I, she I, I, was the child star. I, now she's the 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 the, the I sex suspect pot I icon. May- I suspect I may still have the Playboy uh, issue that she was in. Uh, yeah, and, and and he married her. Like that was that. I mean, that's how famous that dude was. And it wasn't looked at as a crazy. It wasn't like like uh, Julia Roberts and Lyle Lovett, which I know Lyle Lovett is massive in Texas, but for the rest of the country, they were like, they're like who? They were like what? He looks yeah. weird. He's he's an old guy. Yeah. The the uh, the red letter media review of Freddie got fingered. Uh, is, I, I've never seen Freddie Got Fingered, but I watched the... Re, the you know who the dad is? Uh, uh, Rip Torn, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. so uh, uh, because I watched the review. So the review calls out the fact that all of it is a meta cry for help. It's You have the actual human of Tom Green, who's been given millions of dollars of budget to make a movie... And all he wants to do is get the approval of Hollywood. So you have a character in Rip Torn of his dad and a, a, a conceit in which he's given millions of dollars to spend very stupidly. Yeah. And do, like that that shit's kind of genius. I mean, there was an element with, with Tom Green that was fascinating. There was there was like an intelligence behind the stupidity that I think in that moment made it exceptional. Uh I mean, hell, remember, he got a huge interview with Monica Lewinsky when she wasn't doing interviews under the condition that he would only talk about her handbag line. Uh, That sounds an awful lot like when you and I wanted to book Alex Jones. To only talk about (laughs) Star Wars or Star Star Trek. We we, we didn't didn't figure out which one he was into. By the way, I'm still for it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Alex Jones is in the redemptive arc now uh, well, because he, he had Kanye and Nick Fuentes on and then was like, like, hey, like, fuck this. I'm not for Hitler. I hate Hitler. Like, and so now, yeah, uh, uh, after they after they, they hit the boy Alex Jones for a billion dollars, one point two billion dollar <laughs> lawsuit, billion dollars. Uh, conveniently, uh, he <laughs> straight up uh, suddenly became broke. Owing his own company, of which he's the only shareholder, lots of money, and then uh, and, and, and all of his properties are in his wife's name now, and all that stuff. There's a uh, uh, legal eagle uh, did a whole thing on that, and even that at some point my eyes glazed over. And yeah, he's norm- gonna he's gonna do the OJ, yeah, where uh, he'll never Alex yeah. Jones will never make another penny. In his life, in the same way that O.J. Simpson will never make another penny in his life. And anybody who is being awarded that money will spend the rest of their lives fruitlessly filing lawsuits saying, you're hiding money. And he'll say, no, I'm not. And then there is one very big difference. And that that is that Alex Jones may actually find the killers. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that was a weird moment, running into Alex Jones at the local liquor store. <laughs> oh, excuse me. No, we ran into him at Blazer Tag. And Laser Tag. Yeah. Uh, no, because I, I you told ran you the into sto- him I the ran into store. him at, gotcha. at the, the local liquor store, and then uh, and I was like, was that? He's like, yeah, he's here all the time. That was, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll still point out the Fruit Ninja Machine. It's moved from where Alex Jones was playing it uh, when we saw him. We saw Alex Jones playing Fruit Ninja, but I, I am glad. Like I, I we said I'm glad. Hi. I'm glad we said hello. Yeah, and uh, just to confirm it was him. Yeah, like you have to say you have to say hello just to confirm. Yeah, because otherwise you think you saw him. You didn't really see him, but we we saw him. We saw Alex yeah, Jones. Yeah. It was too late. We we saw everything. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sp- uh, speaking of Patrick Stewart. Um, God damn, Logan is a good movie. Made the mistake of watching it just to test a video uh, driver update. Suddenly an hour's passed, and Justin's still texting watching. me. You're saying, still watching Logan. Saying, hey, I'm here. I'm, I'm here. like, uh, whoops, uh, one second. Um, Yeah, Logan, man. 
it's a good it's a good movie. Now it's all folded in, right? It's all it's all going to be MCU canon because they're 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 bringing in all this multi universe stuff. So that means all the all the shit that happened in other franchises yeah, was uh, just uh, part of all other universes. Well, uh, uh, do you do you ever use the Amazon X ray feature? Like when you pause it, it comes up with like pop up video facts. Only when I pause it, pause a Prime thing. Yeah, uh, and sometimes. It's very useful, and sometimes it's a massive spoiler, and I'm really annoyed with it. Uh, in this case, I was testing stuff, and I press pause, and during the 20th Century Fox opening, it says, fun fact, this will be the very last time that he ever plays Wolverine. From a discussion with Jerry Seinfeld, he realized people don't want to eventually think of you as that guy so that's why this is the last time you'll ever see him yeah. as wolverine and it's and then it's just a narrator voice it wasn't yeah <laughs> you know like maybe a buckling as they up are, for, as they for are deadpool. shooting deadpool 3 yeah. now <laughs> and there's no way that he's not going to be a part of secret war right they're going to bring back Everybody. Everybody. And all the Spider-Men, all the Fantastic Fours, all the Blades, all the everything. Anybody who's still alive and everyone else will be AI. Like that, that is that is going to happen for Secret War. Uh we talked a little bit about this on uh Cord Killers, but I had a cool experience uh that surprised me. Uh I'm playing the uh Per Bryce's suggestion, I'm playing the Marvel's Midnight Suns, which is basically a, a, a new franchise, right? Where, where it's like you are the main character. It's got some Mass Effect kind of uh, gameplay style where you create your own character and you're the hunter, but you uh, you literally play better if you earn friendship points with everyone. So there's no romantic interests the way there was in uh, Mass Effect, but but you could get to total friend zone with everybody got you but it's like you've got the uh, uh what are they called the runaways all the kids of the villains yeah right they're there uh uh, uh eventually spider-man shows up iron man and uh, uh, uh dr stranger there from the beginning uh then there's sort of like this rift between the young kids and the uh the avengers and they're all like well, i don't know they're just so bossy and they tell everyone what to why, why does anyone like us and and they form a club literally called the emo kids uh uh, because everything's an acronym but uh one of the fun things is as i'm playing this game and it's good card-based tactical strategy in the vein of um uh uh, slay the spire Mm -hmm. and uh uh, so kids come in and they're all like who's that and i'm like you don't know about because you know i i don't know which kid has seen what at which time but i watched the the first 10 to 30 minutes of uh, of Venom, Blade, and Doctor Strange just because they were there and available. And it's like, uh, oh, you don't know? Here, watch this. And and it was so great to... It's something that that previous to this moment would not be possible because if you're going to... If you have the VHS tape or the laser disc or whatever, you're going to put it in. You're going to watch the whole movie. But the idea of just conjuring up the movie and intentionally just blowing past like forget this forget this here's an important scene and then they do this and now there's a bloodbath and now blade's the cool guy that does whatever by the way open cold open to blade the blood rave oh my god it's amazing uh uh that 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 was really fun i i dig that we live in that world where all these movies exist well uh that not only do they exist but they exist in such abundance that it's not unreasonable for me to summon it, yeah. skip giant chunks of it, and just wave my hands and say, this is dumb for this reason. I guess, yeah. Or, or it, Venom, you know, Venom was originally this, but, uh, but but look at how they redo it in that. And and suddenly, like, by hitting the, the right arrow, we're suddenly at the 45-minute mark. I'm like, anyway, that's enough. Yeah. You get it. You get it. Like, like I... I, I, I I mean, you you know what a fan of remix culture and covers I am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, totally. And, and that doing that in the past, even if you had everything right at your at your fingertips, would have taken four times as long just because. And some amount of preparation. Loading, loading DVD screens and. You know, Seeing the FBI warning. <laughs> yeah, the FBI warning. That's that's a that's 30 minutes right there. Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 fun. Uh, the game. 
has, uh, uh, I want to say everyone, but then I remember just how big the Marvel Universe is. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's insane. Battle Pass is here on Snap. Uh, wait, ba- Battle Pass? Like, we can, we can play each other now. Oh, wait, I, I thought Battle Pass was like a monthly subscription thing. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, point we is, can we, play each other. we can play against yeah. each other. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm here for it. I'll allow it. <laughs> That's Brian showing tremendous restraint to not just, not even shut off the podcast, I, but okay, just okay. let the podcast go silent okay. as like, we play. Uh, Justin, do you ever wonder why we belong together? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, know. I know. I know my teammate. I know my teammate. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of teammates, um, I guess I guess the dude who died on the field is uh, alive. Demar Hamlin. Yes. Yes. Uh, Mar Hamlin survived the, the the thing that happened, but no, yeah, he's he's uh, he's recovering. Is is it possible that he's going to recover well enough to actually play? He was out of the hospital pretty quickly. Uh, it doesn't appear that there's any kind of brain damage. Like he got a a, a pretty full, clean bill of health from the the doctors, considering you know how bad a shape he was in. But I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, we saw him doing Instagram workout videos uh, at some point over the next few months. Now, whether or not he ever has to play football again is a different story. There's there's certainly going to be a career for him doing something, uh, uh, you know, probably without playing football, but a guy who dedicated his entire life to playing football is probably going to want to play football if in any way he can. Yeah. Uh, that's one of those things where, uh, in one of his Instagram posts, or I guess the, the one that I saw on the news, he, he seemed to indicate that, uh, the whole reason and you know, who's to say, but, but he seemed to indicate the whole reason that he played football was so that he could create this charitable foundation uh, to help kids and so on, and which, you know, it raised $6 million overnight or whatever. And uh, now comes the part where it's like, well, if the whole reason you're playing football is so that you could do the thing, but now you have the thing. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't well, you go the, straight the, to the, the having argument, the thing? Yeah, the argument is that you got to keep the thing going, and like anybody can start a charity, but a charity that has an NFL player on it, uh, especially with a with a mailing list like this one has, uh, yeah. you want to keep doing stuff. But yeah, he he's by all available reporting, extraordinarily dedicated to his community. He's from a place called McKees Rock, in outside of Pittsburgh, and despite the fact that he was a very highly touted recruit coming out of high school he wound up going to the university of pittsburgh so he could stay by his community and help out his community and then you know started this toy drive uh thing that wound up you know uh totally exploding after he had his injury i uh i i i I really um first of all it's it's his life he'll live it however he wants but but as an outsider I like to believe in the story that I started doing this thing so that I could do this public good. And given the launch pad of what he has now, part of me wants to see him. I I wouldn't begrudge him one bit if he just went back to playing football because that's what he actually wants. But let's say you had the career that you had, you know, as a magician. And then all of a sudden live on America's Got Talent, you had a heart attack on stage that you survived. You would materially say that you probably wouldn't have had the heart attack if you didn't have all the pressure of doing the show, being on the hot lights. So materially, this desire to continue to perform at the highest level caused this injury. After you recovered and were given a full clean bill of health, Granted, I'm not comparing stage magic to the NFL. No, I think you should. I think they're both uh, uh, the same Equally level. Equally as physically of, strenuous. Uh, yes, yes, uh, and of cultural importance. But I think you would want to perform again. I think you would want to continue to do the thing that you had spent your life perfecting. Yeah, uh, that that's actually not a not a super terrible analogy in terms of um, uh, my my lived experience. I mean, it's like uh, uh, 
if if somebody called me to do a stage show, uh, number one, you know, at, at 48, uh, the show feels a little bit different compared to a 28 year old. Uh, and meanwhile, it's like, I don't know. I really, I, I really dig what we're doing now. I dig talking and, and sharing ideas and making productions and all that stuff. I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think if you were going to say it now, although, yeah, I mean, I wonder what would what what it would take for you to get super excited to perform stage magic again. Cause I think it's possible, but it would have to be big time. It would have to be like Netflix wants to do a live special with you. I'm trying to think of something that would be big enough that you would be yeah, like you, you know what? Fuck it. Diet's on, fucking uh, uh I'm I'm calling all my 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 magic consultant people we're putting together a show let's let let's get back the ba- let's get the band back together let me do a few warm-up gigs like for you to do that how big would the end goal have to be i that's interesting because I, I suspect that it's less about the the size of the end goal and more about the story being told if the story being told is uh brian brushwood is a magician and he's here to finally defeat the things he didn't like about magic in 1995, you know, it's like that that's going to be less interesting to me than, uh, you know, can Brian Brushwood do a magic show? It's like, well, that's, that's an interesting question. (laughs) Let's, let's find out. Well, I think that would be your motivation. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. yeah, No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be your, that'd be your thing. But I'm talking about what the lure, what would it take? Million bucks? Netflix live special. Okay. Oh, I, this done, is interesting. Yeah, so, so, no, no, so yeah, yeah. The, I'm the, about the fame the, and the money. How big would the fame and the money have to be to get you to do it? So, what's interesting is, uh, oh, this is this is fascinating because the <laughs> higher the stakes, cause, cause ultimately, how small would it have to be? <laughs> if, I, if I'm if I'm giving you fifty thousand dollars to do the GM corporate banquet, are you doing it? No. Uh, so uh, I, uh, at some point, I think around like five or six years ago, I, I started reciting to myself, it's full price or it's free. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I, I think at that lower end, I would rather show up and un- be unpaid uh, than, than try to do peak uh, polished magic. But uh, I, I don't know what full price, I don't know, like like you, you were there for that talk I gave uh, where most of it was talking, but there was just enough magic that I really, really dug it. And I dug, uh, I dug beginning with the magic trick and ending with the magic trick and doing little hits in, in, in the middle that that's where I'm driven to be. Um, but, but I don't know, like if there's a million dollar gig, yeah, I'm going to be working out every day and practicing at every local club not because I'm super thrilled to have this gig, but because now that I have this gig, I don't want to embarrass myself. No, yeah, you have to give a million dollars worth of effort. Like that you are you are going to give everything you can to honor the commitment that was made financially. Like because you're that kind of performer. You're 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 not going to sleepwalk through it. Yeah. I might uh, you know what? If if somebody were to commit a, a certain amount of money and I had a certain amount of time, I would definitely call in the Avengers of all of my friends. You know, Alex Rangel, Danny Garcia, oh, yeah, Nate Stanforth, or yeah. whatever. And it's like uh, it would be about. I would be curious if I could create a totally new show, not relying on any of uh, because so many of so much of what worked before. Number one, some of it technologically doesn't work. Like. EVP technologically does not work on cell phones anymore. Uh, the Mr. Happy Pants does not work because that only worked because I was a nobody punching up at kid show magicians. And, uh, and now it's, it's a different story. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm so, I'm, I, I'd be really curious now, now if I'm anybody just, has a million dollars. This, 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 this is a dangerous idea. What if, and this would need money going into it, 
So you'd probably need like a sponsor or something like that. But you got a great theater eight months from now. And now it was content where on uh, Scam Nation, you are showing how you are putting together the work that is going into it. It's now a road to this, and then it's a, a pay-per-view that, that uh, your audience live is paying to see along with what that live show is that you then also then repurpose as content on your channel. Justin, you used the right word when you said dangerous. Yeah. Because we have a black box theater that can seat 70 plus people. And if we add a mezzanine, another uh, 30 or so, so 100, 150 people can be in our theater. Uh, what are you doing to me, Justin? Uh, well, no, I'm, I'm thinking even bigger than that. Like that, that you do as your practice stuff. You right, are gonna, right, right. As the ramp up. The to... ramp up. And then... And then you find whatever your favorite city in America is that you believe you target Shit, try, man. all and your audience. And then like, this is your last magic show. You are going to call in all your favors. You're going to put together the, the, the best. All, and, all, and, all, and the all idea the being needs to be updated. All the stuff needs. We're going to gonna write it from beginning to end. Totally new. I don't, I don't get to rely. I mean, I get to rely on my knowledge because you know, you, you, I would say, I would say, give yourself the out to say like, Nothing will be done the way that you've done it before. Yeah. You might do tricks that you have done. So I do get to all... eat fire. <laughs> yeah. You get to eat fire. Yeah. Well, because also nobody wants to come see you live that's seen you, you know, on the internet forever. And not. And, and not see the things. Like, right. like no, nobody wants, like, you know, the Rolling Stones to come out and say, like, we've worked really hard on this new shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> Hooray for me. I am really great. Yeah, Hooray not. for me. So I think you do, like, I think you do happy pants, but you don't do the happy pants that you've done. You do a new updated version. It's a new routine. You yeah. You know, I can't do the old one because it, it it just continually looks more and more ridiculous as I get older and I'm punching. Uh, what used to be punching up is now punching down. Right, right. Uh, it's so, it's, so it's uh, who who is it. this who is this fictitious more popular kids entertainer that you're exactly. pretending to take on? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think that would be that would be it'd be a lot of content for for Scam Nation, but it would actually be I mean it'd be, it'd be a lot of effort. It would be like a focus for you for a year. I. I think maybe I need that. I don't know. That's that's not bad. I I um uh because because right now uh, uh Bryce correctly called out the fact that the thing I'm most excited about is World's Greatest Con, but I can only force dog and pony audio to produce so fast. <laughs> We're trying it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh speaking of which uh we've we've turned a corner uh well here before we get trust me i, I we're gonna be doing nothing but talking about world's greatest kind as soon as we have a, okay, a, a right. release date uh, i'm at a bachelor party over the weekend yeah and uh my friend eric uh pulls me aside and he's like man it's always so weird to see you on Scam Nation or the Modern Rug. Oh, those aren't the words you want to hear. <laughs> no, it was great. Oh, it really? Great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because he just he loves the channels, and periodically I show up, and it's funny because he got hip to the channels because he met you at my wedding. Then no shit. Then just kind of had him and he's like a huge YouTube guy. So just had subscribed and then just really loved the channels and like slowly kind of like forgot where, where this came from. So, so, so to him, it's just magic he that just you showed the up shows. And then every once in a while I show up and he's like, Oh, that's how, Oh yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. I was thinking about um, uh, that in relation to our friend, Andrew Heaton. And I was thinking about how, uh, how thankful I, 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 I like, like, I, 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 first of all, Andrew is his own person. And for all I know, 
in a world I where I don't exist, he would have fallen in and become friends with you and Tom Merritt and and he would not have. Uh, oh, oh, but no, but you but, are you are you are the connector there. But but I do I I do feel an immense amount of joy and pride to see how quickly and well beloved. Like uh, I was like I picked a good one. <laughs> no, there. There are elements. A, I would not be friends with Andrew Heaton if it were not for you. Uh, two, I think it required both of us to fully bully him into keeping the political the show committee. going. Uh, before the Badger, yeah. So the OG Badger committee was him getting fired from the Blaze, and let go. I don't know. I don't know whether on his NDA <laughs> encompasses me, but uh, yeah. he ended his tenure at the Blaze, and uh, like many people do in that situation, shrugged and said, "Guess I'll look for another Blaze to hire me." <laughs> and uh, and you and I suddenly uh, smash cut to white starched shirts ties uh little name tags that says hello have you heard the good news of patreon well <laughs> we, also, we, he wanted to leave he was like he was like i i don't want to do politics i don't like politics i hate the political meta right now uh he had just gotten a gigantic a vote of confidence from a media company that then had let him go largely because he was not singing the tune that they wanted him to sing. And it was heading into an election year. And so I remember talking to him and him saying like, yeah, I'm just going to move to Edinburgh and just sell bikes. And I was like, we knew each other, but we didn't know each other super well, but this was like the first like friend, friend, friend conversation that I had with him where I was like, I will beat you up. <laughs> That's you, how you know you're friends with Justin Robert Young, is you, when he expresses how much he cares by how willing he is to commit I violence will, to I you. Will, I will commit <laughs> violence on you for your own good if you don't make this election yes. your money. I'm like, the second that the election's over, I don't care. Whatever. Fuck off for two years. Uh, uh make this election your money because I was in the middle of seeing the biggest spike that I had seen in my Patreon because I was covering the election stuff. And I'm like, now is the time. Like you are, this only comes around once every four years. People get really into election stuff. You're doing an election thing. You're great at it. You need to make this money. And then I think it was between the two of us that was like, keep your RSS feed, do a show. Right. The next day. Right. Hopefully let everybody know you, uh, uh, and then also use this as an opportunity to not do four written sketches per episode. And probably you don't have to do five days a week in the way that you used to do five days a week. Right. Uh, uh, lighten the load. Well, make it easier th for there, you. There was definitely a lot of both you and me asking him, what would you like to do? He's like, oh, well, if I could, I'd do incredibly wonky 45-minute discourses on him. Right. like, Maybe do that. <laughs> He's like, well, it's not like, I mean, like one horse joke. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, no. And so, and then of course, and, and, we, and th this is also you and I were kind of hot off uh, uh, our success of, of, of kind of badgering uh, Tom Merritt into uh, uh, going fully indie because Tom Merritt had always been, he was at CNET and he was at Twit and, and, uh, he, he hadn't really done. No, Tom, Tom, I didn't buy. Heaton, I bought, would just be a sad boy and get on a plane, get on a British Airways flight to fucking Scotland and uh, on a one way ticket and think about coming back at some point. Heaton, I bought. Tom, I never bought. Tom, Tom was singing that bullshit when he left Twit where he's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do tech. I don't know if I'm going to do tech. And I'm like, Fuck you. Bullshit. Like you wake up and 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 do you can't do that on a daily Wait, basis for as long yet, as yes done. to the tech part, but but also I got the impression and now we're talking a little bit out of school about Tom Merritt, but uh 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 it was only a few months into it that Tom was asking the type of questions that indicated to me, oh, you've not spent decades being an independent entrepreneur. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and that's the part that, that I'm, I'm pleased with. It is that, that he had the most explosive Patreon of its, of its era. Yes. When he fell back, when he fell back, the world caught him. Like, well, and plus also, uh, not only that, not only did, did his explode, but then also, you know, cord killers benefited and 
uh, very quickly, uh, Brian and Justin went independent. Yes. No. Yeah. We we uh, we we smelled gold in them Var Hills. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, but, no. Heaton Heaton. I thought because it sucks. Like that. That was. I think it. It sucks to have something wrapped all around you and have people validate you with the kind of money and faith that they did to Heaton. And then say this isn't for us anymore, and and you can't blame the company. That's their job. Their job is to pick the programming. But like for, on a personal level, that blows. Like there's no way that that can't hurt the most. Well, and uh, it was a it was a speculative bet for the Blaze to try to bring a a, a funny moderate into their uh, their mix. Uh, it was a bit off book well, for them. I think at that time that was where they were leaning. Co- uh, correct, uh, or or speculating at, at the time, and then no, no, Glenn was like on his whoops, like that was his like whoops tour. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. When Trump got elected, he went out and did, he did Samantha B. He did uh, I forget which magazine he did, but it was like sorry guys, my fault. And he was like refashioning himself as a uh, a, 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 a a never Trump reformer, uh, and then. You know, I, I apparently there are fewer dollars in that at that time. Well, and also, I don't, I don't want to shit on Glenn Beck because I kind of feel like it's sort of the George Lucas thing. Where oh, like, I, like, I, I, I get the impression that Glenn Beck is authentic to a fault. Like uh, he, he just well, says what he's feeling at that moment, sure. which changes. And yes, like if George Lucas could never say the words Star Wars again, but could maintain all the jobs of everybody who worked at Lucasfilm to do whatever they wanted without selling the company, I think he would have. Yeah. I think the money, you know, at a certain point, everything costs something. And he had a big ship. He bet so big on Lucasfilm to be up in in San Rafael and, and the Bay Area that it's like, 1999 came around and ILM made money, but not as much money as it would need to keep everybody going at, at, you know, at, at that. It's a, it's a, uh, 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 George, yes. Uh, listen, uh, we've talked to all of our, uh, psychics, our wizards, our sages, uh, they, they, they've all been, are they doing the prayer visuals? Yes, they, they are. They are. Uh, they've all figured out that there's a magic spell that you need to say that will save Everyone. Everybody. Uh, uh, well, uh, what is it? As, as, as long as it's not Star Wars. Oh, yeah. George. <laughs> Here, here's the thing. <laughs> the spell is two words, and they are Star Wars. And I think that's part of why he has the attitude that he has today, is that I think he still does love that franchise, but I don't think that he really wanted to do it. He did it. He he gave it his best shot. He he got back into the groove. He did what he whatever he was gonna do, and it was the prequels. And there was such a fucking backlash to it, for which I gleefully participated in. Oh sure, and like uh, I think he was just like, no fuck you people, fuck well, and, and, you and, people. Uh, thinking of it in that context, um, uh, our, our writer friend who wrote uh, uh, how Star Wars conquered the universe. Yeah, uh, so much went into. So much of the magic of Star Wars 1977 was uh, peripheral to George Lucas and yeah. not uh, his direct vision. Uh, you know, as we've talked about, like Brian De Palma wrote the opening crawl, and yeah. his wife is the one who won the Oscar Alleg- for the editing. Allegedly saved the movie in the end. <laughs> yeah, exa- exactly right. And and uh, uh, we're in the middle of seeing uh, 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 what's his name with the orchestral music, um, uh, John, John Williams. Williams. Yeah. Uh, 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 Ralph McQuarrie and uh, his, his work. Uh, ben Burton is an incredible sound design or whatever. It's like the the product was greater than the sum of all those parts. And, you know, he was definitely the face of it. And I, I don't know. I uh, As I creep up on 50, I have a little bit more sympathy for somebody in George Lucas's position. Oh, yeah. And that's the same thing with, with, with Glenn Beck because I think he looked at The Blaze and was like, the blaze is what he cares about. He cares about the idea of, of creating his own ship 
He uh, he really, really... I, I do think that he genuinely cares for his employees. Nobody I know that has worked for the Blaze has really had anything negative to say about it. Even Heaton on the way out, like he had a lot of good things to say about some of the executive well, and, and, leadership there. But I think at the end, he's like, oh, this is the best thing for me and the best thing for the company is for me to be this different kind of voice because the world is splintering. It's not just going to be A and B. I want to chart out this this course. And then I think he eventually both spiritually and financially had the come to Jesus where it's like, no, unfortunately, politics is about you're either with us or against us. And so I got to find my lane for being with us. And all of a sudden, the messages for which I think he was building out on the periphery of that show is like, hey, look, I, I hate to see him go, but we need to be clarity of message here because that's what's going to keep everybody employed. And And you know how hard it is to hire people, how hard it is to pay people and how hard it is to let go of people. Nobody wants to do it. And so like, I, I, I think for, for, I, I don't know shit, but my guess would be that Glenn Beck cares a lot about his employees and wants to do what's right for the employees and their families. Uh, up to and including sticking to what works. I mean, at the end, play ya ya ding dong, right? Like at the, <laughs> at, the end, at the end of the day, just you got to give the people what they want. And and if you're like, no, try this other thing, and they're like, okay, we did, it sucks, and you're like, here's meatloaf again. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, regardless, uh, man, oh man, am I so so pleased that Andrew Heaton, like, it, it was as though in our uh, in our loose confederation of independent creators, we were lacking an organ that we didn't know we needed. <laughs> and then Andrew May or Andrew Heaton just plugs in and, and uh, like he no, was always there. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of Andrew Maine. Uh, uh, well, hold on. Wait, no, one last Andrew Heaton thing. Okay. Uh, it's official now. March 1st in the historic and scenic tenderloin district of San Francisco, we're not wrong. First live show at Piano Fight. Oh, that's wonderful. On, on March 1st. Uh, Piano Fight, where we have performed, is, is no more. Closing in mid-March. Oh, you're going to get in before before they... Before. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so... Uh, well, shoot, I might I, have to... I, uh, March uh, 1st? And it's my, uh, my 40th birthday that weekend, so I was going to be out there for uh, that anyway. And... I was uh, I was like, well, fuck it, let me hit them up, see if they have a spot on on Wednesday, and and they do. Well, so we'll what's what, uh, what's the website where people can buy tickets? Twitter dot com slash Justin R Young. <laughs> we are still we are still. I, hopefully, by the time that this comes out, uh, I will have the ticket link from Piano Fight. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah. W would you like to fly out there for free? Because uh, I can fly out there and you can be on the companion pass. Sure, yeah. yeah. But by fun. the way, that that's been a fun game uh, <laughs> having the companion pass and being able to be all like, "Hey, you want to go you wherever?" Go? <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, totally. Come on, be on the show. Uh, be on, be on the We're Not Wrong. Show. Oh, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm not that good at. Politics. I always mention on the show that you're eventually going to be on because uh, whenever you come up in conversation, I'm like, at some point, somebody's going to not be able to make the show, and Brian's going to be the call. So well, I, I, I very much look forward to that, uh, but I also very much respect. Uh, we were talking about this before we went on the air for the same reason that it's hard for you to listen to Cord Killers because you're listening to two people that you very much want to pipe in and discuss, and then you oh, just it's, find it's, you're it's talking yeah. alone. There's, there's shows that I can't listen to I, that my friends do that I can't listen to because it's, it's too close to a, like, a, but you know, there's, there's that, that, um, uh, uh, meme of like the kid next to the ice cream ad. And he's like also smiling. And so it looks like for like at a glance, it looks like there's three people sitting next to each other, but it's just one person sitting next to a sign. And it's like what it's like uh, uh, listening to podcasts. Y yes. Uh, yes. And it's, it's very much that always right with podcasting because you become, you know, a, a, a parasocially bonded to these people. And that's part of the fun of it. It's, it's part of the enjoyment. 
uh, of having the one-way friendships. The only problem is that when it's a one-way friendship on what is otherwise a two-lane road. When, when you have the like, ability to I pick go? up. Yeah. It, it, there's a number of times that I've, I've, I've called uh, you or I've called uh, Matt Donnelly or I've called Andrew Heaton. And I was like, hey, I was listening to your thing. And I realized I like the version better where I could talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let's resume. I don't know what you said after this part, but this is what I just heard. Let's talk. It's weird which ones I can do and which ones I can't. I, t I tend to be able to do one mic shows. And then also the fact that I had listened to Ice Cream Social before we were on there, I can still listen to Ice Cream Social. Uh, but panel shows where I... Where, where, where you have, you can vividly picture your seat at the table have to be panel extraordinarily shows where difficult. I can, at three o'clock in the morning, apropos of nothing, with no warning, call both hosts <laughs> and have a 50 50 shot that they'll answer it because they think it's an emergency. And I could just say, Oh, I just wanted to talk. And we'd probably get about 10 minutes before everybody hung up on me. <laughs> like that's, that's, those are the ones that were, it's, it's, it's harder. Uh, I very, very much understand it. <laughs> and, uh, I very much looking for uh, am looking forward to my first whole episode of we're not wrong <laughs> to experience. Oh, yeah, Cause you live. tried to listen to it last night. I did. Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 hard. It, it's very very <laughs> hard when you know everybody at the table and you feel like you're you belong there. <laughs> I'm listening to Jen Briney's January sixth episode, which I would encourage everybody to listen to. It's about two hours, but it's 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 a good summation of the January sixth hearings. But she's been wanting me to listen to it because I've been like a little blasé about the hearings, and she was very very excited about what was found. Uh, so anyway, listen to We're Not Wrong. Oh, because I'll I'll tell her that that'll be that was a runner on on where not wrong was. Hey, did you listen to the January sixth episode? And I'm like, no, not yet, not yet. So I have to listen to it. Now. At some point, you're going to be like, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, we're closer to next January sixth. It seems like I should listen to it too <laughs> on well, January sixth. You know, <laughs> spoiler for my we're not wrong take, but I'm like, January sixth is very very different, depending on whether or not you look at it as succession a drama, or Arrested Development, a comedy. <laughs> because, That's pretty good. like, you know, if you look at it in the most dramatic ways possible, you're like, holy shit, we narrowly avoided This was a Civil calamity. War Part 2. This was a Civil War. If you look at it as Barry Zuckercorn and Job, you're like, no, this was a dumb plan that was dumb from the beginning, had no chance of succeeding ever. Spoiler alert, it didn't succeed. It's so dumb that it's hard to even make a criminal charge against it <laughs> because the plan was so fucking stupid and they didn't even stick to it. Like It's like uh, 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 charges are conspiracy. Define conspiracy. A plan to... Uh, 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 Say that first word again. A plan to ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh, yeah. See see what you did there. <laughs> it sounds like you're indicating there was a plan. <laughs> yeah, and and there was. It was just a. It's like all right. If my plan is, I'm going to kill the president. Whoa. By way of using my mind <laughs> to stop his heart. <laughs> And, relevant and, relevant to and, this season of world's greatest and God. I spend, <laughs> and i spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and i am going back and forth with my lawyer and, and i book tickets to go see the president am i trying to assassinate the president or is that the dumbest fucking idea ever that had no chance of succeeding <laughs> my my goal is to exercise my free speech rights by glaring at the president and and, and when the, people see my glare they'll know that i'm wishing he was dead and it is like uh, uh what <laughs> handcuffs go on well, well, like yeah, that's the thing is it's like all right well uh, uh, you said the words kill the president so you've made a plan to do something fucked up donald trump made a plan to try and subvert the election uh Anyway, you, 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 you'll hear the rest uh, of, on, on appropriate channels. But I do think I, I really just wanted to road test my succession versus arrested development. Thing, oh, no, so. that's that's a really great comparison. Speaking yeah. of which, uh, you saw the new su succession trailer. 
God, it's so good. It's so good. Like, like uh, the uh, uh, my eyes glazed over after the first minute, but that first minute about the discussion of like, uh, okay, will you take a call? It's like, uh, yeah, well, it's, is, is he going to call? It's like, well, he's considering calling. Well, can you, uh, I can get you a text to invite you to a to call. You to call him. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, no, nah, I'm going to need to hear that voice. <laughs> No, it's it's so. <laughs> Meanwhile, so, so Tom good. is just like, yeah, but if I divorce your daughter, we're still cool, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, if we're good, we're good. And he's like, oh, so it's good. heartening. Uh, all right, no, man. So good, so good. So. Uh, 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 housekeeping. Uh, uh, Patreon dot com slash Great Night is how you keep us in business. And yeah, showing up yeah. in the Sorry middle. Sorry that of- this wasn't the normal big thing, but we're trying to keep everybody safe, keep everybody off the roads. We we were thinking about doing it tomorrow night, but tomorrow night is apparently going to be just as bad as tonight, so it wouldn't make sense for us to do it. This is the best we could do. Sorry for for not giving you guys the uh, the full Monty, but we'll be back on our uh, back on our bullshit next week. Uh, yeah, and as an apology. Um, we both discuss this. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna drop into the feed at the end of this episode. God damn it! A super secret project that we've worked on no, <laughs> for a no, long we time. Give the patrons, the the the, the, world, the the world's greatest con patrons, the 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 some some exclusivity because we already announced the topic of. Oh, I I wasn't talking about world's greatest con. Oh shit! I need to talk to the Learn principal character. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, the, the people that were actually in it. Sh- should I call that person right now? And try see? and call him. Okay, I'll I mean, try to call him. Doing, he uh, can't be doing anything. You, you say as much as you feel comfortable. Well, yeah, no. Just I, call we won't him reveal we'll who it is. It. Call Jomo. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have birds at my smart bird feeder. Dude, the funny thing is, I said I wouldn't reveal it, and I said call Jomo. We could always bleep it. You should just say, hey, can you come out and do the show tonight? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, Well, let me do, uh, maybe you could just play it on the mic <laughs> just just a little taste just a little taste just a little give us a little farah eisen no jesus <laughs> this is this is something i've been trying to tease out of justin for over a year now i just i've been so wrapped up with world's greatest con i know <laughs> well this is the thing we were in vegas right and yeah. Corey, we had like gone back and forth we'd hung out a couple times and everything and and Corey had hit me up a few times during the the world's greatest con production and I was like, yeah, man, no, we'll totally get together. And so we we randomly meet him in Vegas, and Corey is Corey, and he's uh, like, uh, uh, Corey Coleman, Corey Coleman, yeah. And he's like, 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 man, what the fuck? You don't return my calls anymore. And I'm like, I've been working, I've been working, I've been doing this thing. We're we're actually we're at the end. Literally, you've met That's me. That's why we're in at Vegas. The end of this entire process. And so, uh, uh, Joma's another one. The reason why I we have not released this is because I keep meaning to talk to Jomo and say. Hey, what do we want to do with this? Do you guys want to work on it independently? But we, uh, we could play just a, just a maybe uh, thirty seconds right. of low quality over the microphone. You know, a little pre, a little, a little tickle, a little tickle about like, oh, what? How good would it be if we had our own flight of the Concords? Hi, I'm Farah Eisen. You might know me from Earth in the Morning on KBFS Public Radio or my award-winning podcast series, The Night They Died from Murder. A month ago, I was... All right, that's it. No, oh, that's it? That's that's all? Okay, all right. That's it. All right, well... Well, because it's only seven minutes. I mean, uh, you know... No, I mean, we we gave away like uh, 15% of the entire thing just now. 15%, yeah. Yeah, so Farrah Eisen, we got him. (laughs) We nailed him down. (laughs) I really want to release We nailed him down. I want to, too. I mean, I guess the only thing I hate Fucking promoing shit that we don't that, that, have that, that we don't know for. what to do with. Yeah, yeah. I hate, no, I hate, uh, hate, hate that. And and you're 100 percent correct because what it does is it robs you of the dopamine. You you get the do- dopamine rush and it's unearned because like you kind of feel like you did the and thing. Look, if we talk to Jomo and Jomo's like, yeah, look, we don't have time to do some shit. Uh, then it's like, 
cool. If he's like, oh, we do have time to do some shit. Let's work on stuff. Then, then all then of a sudden we could release it and say, yeah, we're working on it. And we'll deny this conversation ever happened. If anybody brings it up, we'll be like, we have no idea what you're talking about. It would be fun to just be a thing that no one ever hears. We have been making it's references. Too, it's too We've good. We've been making references to this good for one. a fucking year. <laughs> good one. B caves. Well, that's also the other thing about it is that, like, the goal with World's Greatest Con and Dog and Pony Show Audio to begin with is I just want to get to a point where people pay money to for us to make shows. Yes. And I just want good shows that I can always say, hey, give us money, make this. Yeah, you want to, you want to. Blank show? Oh, do you, we got a show. Do you like this? Because it's good? Great. Good. Give us Mon- money. Money. Because I want to be able to get out of deals with talent where we're like, hey, let's split it up and then say, hey, here's money and let's split it up. That, that's what I want. Well, and and, and there's, uh, there is something to be said, especially if you're getting started or emerging as talent uh, or developing talent. Uh, that's my favorite situation is to invent an imaginary pie split it in advance and then make it a real pie. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that seems to work pretty, pretty good. Uh, but at some point you're like, no, I know I'm awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, you just want to also snap everybody to attention and, and you want to pay infrastructure to make it happen. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll talk to Joe Mo and release it. Uh, 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 I don't know why we would talk to Joe Mo. As far as I know, there's no project that we're doing with it's just right, Fair like, Eisen. Let's say, Fair, Fair do you Eisen. Have, do you have Fair's number? Uh, you know what? I have his email and his <laughs> advice. His advice was, "Oh, a podcast. Why don't you do what I did and sell it Stop to the it. New York Times?" Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. now, you, now you're really now you're really going we're, we're, going we're gonna get in trouble you're all right. going deep. okay all right look we love you guys <laughs> uh, shine on you crazy diamonds uh, it's been a great day yes <laughs>